Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another banger today. We're going to be talking all about something the pros seem to do effortlessly, unnoticeable in fact, and that is change gear. Now it might seem like a simple task, but there are a few tips and tricks out there that the pros do to make that gear change as efficient and as best as possible. So in this video, here are some of my top tips the pros do to change gear. use lube. It's a life lesson that if you don't, you're going to learn something the hard way. And that's on your drivetrain, of course. If you don't keep that fin running smoothly, well then you're in for a world of trouble. It's not just all about the lube to keep things running smoothly though. Pros will make sure that their chains are in the best condition, chain rings, cassettes, things like that. There's no sharp edges or shark's teeth. If it starts looking really pointy, you know it's on the way out. Narrow wide chain rings are still their correct shape, so all the teeth are the right shape, they've not gone to a point. And that's because when you are changing gear under pressure, any of these sharp edges or rounded edges can cause the gears to skip. So if you're especially getting the power down and that sudden whew, skip happens, that's definitely not a good thing. With the chain, keep your eyes peeled for wear and tear of that as well. Any side to side movement in the links, potentially uh, sort of rusted or damaged links as well, anything like that, and it means the chain is going to need replacing. You can actually get uh, specific chain checkers, Park Tool make them in fact, where you put something on it, you push a pin to the side, and it measures how much play there is in that. Like I said, if you've got a really worn chain, then it could potentially snap under load as well. And that's gonna cause a lot of pain as well, changing gear, and you just don't want that. Use the right lube for the right season. A chain that runs freely, shifts easily, and lasts longer. You'd be surprised how much power and energy is lost in the drag of a chain. So try dry lubes in the summer and wet lubes in the winter. Each will keep things running far smoother. In fact, you could even check out a video that Doddy's done linked to the description below about what's the best lube to use. Nowadays, the front mech is all but dead and one by is the way forward, really. Most race disciplines use a one by chain set, be it XE, downhill, enduro, you name it. But having said that, the front mech is still by used by some people. So I'm gonna to touch on that briefly when it comes to changing gear. If you are running multiple rings up front, then the chain line is a key thing you need to think of here. Running a chain across extreme angles will cause drag and put extra wear and tension on the system. If you're in the largest ring up front, try not to use the largest two out back and vice versa. If you're in the smallest up front, try not to use the two smallest out back. It'll stop that chain line from being too extreme and make your shifting smoother and easier. Now, what if you are part of that one by brigade then? Well, it's pretty much all pros from here in. No front mech, less weight. No front mech, less moving parts. No front mech, less maintenance. It's all a win-win situation here. Plus, with the addition of wide ratio cassettes at the back, it means that you've got that really big range of gears to get up or down and never actually run out, really. If you do check out any of the pro's bikes, you'll notice that actually they always use a wide range cassette out back, and sometimes they may change, depending on the type of course or trail they're riding, the size chainring they're using at the front. If it isn't particularly hilly and quite fast, well, then they might go slightly larger chainring up front, that way they're not topping out too much at back and just spinning away. <laughs> what about the art of actually changing gear then? Well, there is a few bits and bobs I've got for you here. Firstly, being under pressure. No, not yourself, your group set. And that is backing off when you are pedaling and trying to change gear. So when you're grinding away up a hill, have you ever noticed you try to change gear and it's clunking and crunching and making all sorts of horrible noises? Well, you, what you want to do is just back off that pressure ever so slightly. Just pedal a little bit softer, if you like. Pedal a little bit lighter rather than really stamping on the pedals. And really nicely notice it will slot into gear a lot easier. There'll be a lot less resistance and pressure on the paddle of the shifter, allowing you to push it and shift it across, be it up or down the block. Uh, much simpler, basically. Shifting under pressure and forcing the bike into gear risks damaging the drivetrain. It can damage the mech, the cassette, the chain and the chain ring. Not all at the same time, I don't want to say that by any means, but it can risk damaging any one of them. And if there's a weak link in there somewhere, well, it calls for something to go. So like I said, if you are coming into a tricky section, like especially where you need to put some power up a climb, just back off ever so slightly, slot it into gear and then get back on that power and pick up that nice cadence again and you'll 
motor on up. What about those quick changes then when you need to suddenly be in the right gear at the right time? What do the pros do then? Well, it always comes down to forward thinking and planning, but in a split second. And that takes a lot of practice, obviously, but pros will be looking ahead and they'll be assessing what's coming up all within a blink of an eye. So like this big old climb here, they'll be going up, they'll be looking at their line, weather conditions, ground conditions, loose conditions, rocks dotted about, but processing all that really quickly and then changing gear accordingly when they need to. So they might come up to a slight kick and a climb, change gear beforehand so they can spin on up it nicely. If the weather is a little bit sort of say wet and damp and they'll get into the right gear for that to stop themselves wheel spinning. So they might actually gear down a little bit harder. So a bit of a harder gear to really talk their way through the mud. Sometimes rather than an easy gear, if it's really slippery where they're just spinning away a million miles away like that. All of these actions will be processed in absolutely no time at all. Once you do get the hang of it, it's intuitive. It just becomes instinctive, but fear not. That does take time. So if you aren't getting the hang of it straight away, well then practice, 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 and it will become that sort of next, next level thinking. You'll just do it without even realizing it. But I've said about all these different things. So let's sort of do a, a practical demonstration if you like. So you guys and girls can really get a hang of what I mean by saying being in the right gear at the right time. This climb here then is absolutely littered with rocks and it's starting to kick up a bit. So I'm gonna back off the pressure. There we go, gears change nice and easily. I'm in a slightly firmer gear because it is quite loose and I don't want a wheel spin. If I go real easy gear like this, then well, you can start wheel spinning away, especially oh, on that looser stuff. Now finally, shifting gear doesn't just have to be one gear at a time. Often pros will drop it through lots of gears at once. Now this is a bit more advanced, if you like, a little bit trickier, and it only really occurs in certain scenarios. So a great example of this is, uh, say if you've climbed up a really steep climb, you're up there in first or second gear and you're really spinning away, but then all of a sudden it crests at the top, it's either flat or you drop back down. Well, then you'll find yourself still spinning, but banging through the gears quite quickly. Shifting down through the block into harder gears, that doesn't really affect it too much. It's the other way. So if you're coming down a hill really fast and you suddenly then hit a steep uphill and you're there smashing it back up the, uh, the cassette, well, then that's where you do need to be careful because if you're really cranking it again, like I said earlier, in the video and you're there shifting from ninth up to second, well, that's gonna put a lot of stress forcing the mech all the way across. Pros will do this because, well, they generally don't have to worry about their gear a lot of the time, but they don't wanna ever break it, especially in a competition. So they will still be gently, you know, making, rather than just, like six or seven shifts, they might do three or four, get it in the right cadence, and three or four, get it in the right cadence, maybe even two or three, it depends on the climb. There we go. Oh, right then, there we have it. Those are some top tips to help you change gear, like an absolute boss, like a pro in fact. But I'm at the top now and that means it's back down. So I'm not gonna need to change gear too much more. So I'm out of it. But do you know what? If you'd like to see any other videos of things that pros do that you might not have thought of before, well, why not let me know in the comments below? As always, give the channel a little subscribe. Show it some love because, you know, we love making videos for you. But I'm out of here. Thanks very much for watching, everyone, and I'll catch you later.